Hi, I am Ricky Trisha Theris Obadong and today I am going to show you a presentation about an impacted case. So our topic is all about surgical and orthodontic management of a horizontally impacted permanent mandibular canine. So impacted tooth refers to a tooth that fails to erupt into the dental arch within a specific time. Teeth frequently impacted are third molars, maxillary canines, maxillary and mandibular premolars, and maxillary central incisors. Failure of eruption of the mandibular canine is an unusual event. It has been suggested that eruption disturbances of a mandibular canine are most often caused by local factors such as mechanical obstruction, insufficient space in dental arch, and tooth arch size decrepancy. Systemic factors such as genetic disorders, endocrine deficiencies, and previous irradiation of the jaws also have been suggested to play a role. So surgical exposure and orthodontic management of impacted canines have been used to bring impacted teeth into occlusion. The following case report presents combined surgical and orthodontic management of an uninterrupted mandibular permanent right canine. So we have our case presentation here. A 10-year-old boy presented with decayed teeth in the lower right jaw. Careful history revealed occasional pain for the past one year that was revealed by use of over-the-counter painkillers. On extra oral examinations, the patient's profile was convex and lips were competent. Intraoral examination revealed Figure 1, we have intraoral view of maxilla and mandible in occlusion. Figure 2, occlusal view of maxilla. Then figure 3, occlusal view of mandible. It is revealed that the patient was in late mixed dentition stage. Dental age corresponded to 10 to 11 years of age. Fair oral hygiene of patient, according to simplified oral hygiene index, mandibular right deciduous canine and maxillary left deciduous second molar root pieces were over-retained and mobile. Molar relation was class 1 bilaterally. The patient had normal overjet and overbite. Premolars were erupting in all four quadrants. Mandibular right permanent lateral incisor had drifted distally and lower left permanent mandible canine was completely erupted in contrast to unerupted lower right permanent mandibular canine. Provisional diagnosis is angles class 1 malocrucian. Investigations the patient was advised an orthopantomograph and intraoral preapical radiograph to check the status of the canine in the lower right permanent canine region. The orthopatomograph shows horizontally an impacted mandibular right permanent canine impinging on the apical third of the lateral incisor root. A mandibular occlusal radiograph was also advised to evaluate buccolingual position. The occlusal radiograph showed the tooth was placed across the arch with crown portion placed on the buccal aspect and root portion placed in lingual aspect. Then study models were prepared and Moyer's space analysis was performed. Clinical examination and analysis of the diagnostic casts revealed that there was enough space for the eruption of the mandibular right permanent canine. Our confirmatory diagnosis is Angle's class 1 molocclusion with horizontally impacted lower right permanent mandibular canine. Treatment and follow-up. We have course of treatment. First, we have phase 1 pre-surgical orthodontic intervention. It is oral prophylaxis was carried out. Extractions of 
over retained 8, 3, 6, 5, and 5, 5 were performed. Lower lingual arch space maintainer was given to maintain the space in lower arch. Lower arch was bonded with 0.018 MBT metallic edgewise brackets. Uprighting of mandibular right lateral incisor was performed and space was created for eruption of the impacted canine. For maxillary arch, the authors anticipated minimal to moderate crowding of dental arches based on mixed dentition analysis for which fixed mechanotherapy was complemented using MBT metallic edgewise brackets to improve the overall maxillary mandibular relationship, enhancing general aesthetics, functions, and hygiene. Then phase two, surgical intervention. The patient's fitness to undergo the surgery was evaluated. Prior to the surgery, prophylactic antibiotics and analgesics were started. A small triangular shape, full thickness, mucoperiosteal flap was elevated after careful localization, utilizing the radiographs as guide. The impacted permanent right mandibular canine was exposed surgically by employment of a crevicular incision and vertical relieving incision distal to this lateral incisor. Part of the labial surface of the canine was made visible by slight bone guttering after evaluation of the flap. Bleeding was controlled. Bag's bracket was bonded on labial aspect of exposed tooth surface after achieving proper isolation from surrounding bleeding from surgical site. Following this, a ligature wire was passed through this bracket and twisted and attached around a nickel titanium main wire. The flap was replaced and sutured. Post operative instructions were given. Then, phase 3 post surgical orthodontic intervention. The patient was recalled after a week for the removal of sutures and to tighten the ligature with wire around the nickel, nickel titanium wire activation of ligature wire with the help of the shape memory property of nickel titanium wire. Once every 15 days, the ligature wire was tightened around the nickel titanium wire until the wire got deformed. After 2.5 months, the tooth was visible clinically. At this stage, the ligature wire, which was twisted around the nickel titanium wire, was cut off. The nickel titanium wire was directly engaged to the bag's bracket on the canine and stabilized with ligature wire. At the end of four months, the canine came into its proper position in the arch. The patient was evaluated until the end of the retentive phase of orthodontic therapy. A positive vitality test and good period don't assume with respect to the mandibular canine warranted and success of our treatment approach. We have our conclusions. Horizontally impacted mandibular canines are very rare and difficult to manage. Asymptomatic teeth should be kept under observation and symptomatically impacted teeth require surgical extraction or surgical exposure and orthodontic management. Surgical and orthodontic management of the impacted teeth is the most appropriate way to give functional and aesthetically accepted occlusions. That would be all. Thank you.